Hello, welcome back to Foose Entertainment. For the next um, couple of reviews, I decided to go back into this spot again. And because it's so much easier to maintain how long um, the reviews are, which obviously was something I should have done with the last three reviews, which I did in one take. And those actually ended up being about 40 minutes in total, so possibly almost an hour. And they were split up in three parts, around teamlessly, for the John Wick trilogy. So, uh, we're going to do it traditionally like we usually do it. Well, long time for these. I promised these quite a, lot, a while ago, and now we're finally getting to it. So let's start out with, uh, make sure I get the right date on this. Yeah, okay. Start out with 2017's It. So you see I have the regular Blu-ray release, not the still book or any editor release. Just a regular one. They're a little bit light, you can kind of see it a little bit. Alright, so it. It says on the back it will creep you out big time. Well, um, unfortunately it did not creep me out big time. But what I do like about this particular um, incarnation of Stephen King's It is how faithful it is to the source material. It is very faithful to the book. I myself have not read it, but I have read plenty of Stephen King novels that I can tell you when it feels Stephen Kingish, and when it doesn't. Um, the 1990 NBC miniseries did not feel anything like a Stephen King abnotation. Not a thing like it. So, um, fell short of being true to the book. And for why I hear, um, this particular film is very faithful to the book. So you might say a little too faithful. At times it actually gets a little um, over the top. Some of the gore and so on in the adult situations. Um, but that's what Stephen King does in this novel. So it makes you feel very uncomfortable. And that's certainly the case with 2017's it. I could say um, I was astonished by this movie. I did not go to movie theaters to watch it. Just want to point that out. I did not go pay for a box office ticket. I got it on Blu ray, watched it. I'm a 51 inch plasma screen, which was my old way of watching movies before, of course, upping it to an actual theatrical projector, as you obviously saw um, in the last three videos for the John Wick trilogy with it being in the background instead of my collection of entertainment. In fact, actually, I think I should, we should show a little bit more of it off, shall we? Uh. Yeah, that's a little better. i myself out here. Yeah, there we are. And um, the visual effects in this are very, very good. The um, execution of Holder in this movie is very, very good. The um, character development in this movie is very, very good. This is, this is what it's like to make a top-notch Holder movie that you can really be proud to watch again and again and again. This film does not disappoint. Um, I really like what New Line Cinema has been doing for the past few years. They have been making a lot of very, very good um, source material. Some of the best they've done during their entire existence. With the Conjuring universe and of course the Stephen King It movies in the, the sequel to The Shining with Dr. Sleep with Ellen McGregor which I really enjoyed as well. I will be reviewing that when I get it in Blu-ray in, in February, so that gives you a little idea how long of a wait there actually will be on Dr. Sleep. You have to wait until February for that. 
it's been too long since I've seen the movie theaters that I kind of forgotten every little detail about the movie. But <clears throat> this is kind of like the brand new Foose Entertainment, if you really think about it. Um, so we'll be skimming through our synopsis a little bit quicker. So let's go into the synopsis of Steamy King's It from 2017. Obviously, because of times so of when the movie was made, they want to make the second half of the movie take place literally in 2019. In order for them to do that, they had to make it chapter one, which is this one. They had to make it take place pretty much for someone of my age. So it takes place in 1989. And we see um, a club of friends that are part of a club called the Losers Club. And they, of course, befriend um, other people, a, a new kid who has just come to town by the name of Ben. And, uh, of course, um, this, this black kid, which I actually forget his name for some odd reason, Hmm. Doesn't say. I think it might be Danny, maybe, but I'm pretty sure that's not right. But um, the uh, we friend this black kid as well, and of course there's these bullies um, that are that are um, ran by this very scary teenager by the name of Henry, who uh, torments these. Um, Teenagers, these young young children. And of course, I also befriend a um, teenage girl by the name of Beverly. And basically, uh, around all this time, our main character Bill is suffering from um, the loss of his younger brother, Georgie. And of course, anybody who saw the 1990 miniseries for NBC knows what happened to Georgie. So we'll just go over it very quickly. We are introduced to Pennywise when um, Bill is um, helping Georgie make a paper boat so that he can go outside in the rain and let it float on the puddles of water out on the um, streets. Goes out there, starts having fun. This is track of the uh, paper boat, and it ends up in the sewer. And of course, the very young boy, I uh, can't be more than about seven years old, goes to the sewer's opening to try to retrieve the paper boat. And that's when we get introduced to Pennywise. Hugh schemes Georgie in, promising to give him back the paper boat but instead actually eats Georgie. And when we mean by eat Georgie, we actually see Pennywise eat Georgie. So that's to tell you why I, that's what I mean by this movie's elaborate. It does not hold things back. It has a very solid and very high R rating for a lot of reasons. So yeah, this is nothing like the miniseries that aired on NBC in 1990. This is very much an inappropriate for children rated R movie. Which means that this review, I might add, just for the FTC, he was probably watching this, is this being uploaded. This is a review for adults, so I will obviously be having derogatory terms, and I will be cussing, I will be talking about graphic nature for this review. So I get that out of the way. Alright, so let's game for this. So Bill is... Um, desperate to find out what happened to his younger brother. And so now it's summer. School's out for summer. And um, Bill and his friends go on a search mission to try to find a missing girl. I can't say I remember her name. And that's where he befriend all these um, Edder teenagers and really formed the Lizard's Club in this completion. And then they find that they all have been sharing visions and nightmares of a clown like figure who is Pennywise. Um, origin unknown. 
of course, um, to the Stephen King novel itself, and it kind of does tell you this in the second chapter, in, in chapter two. Pennywise is actually an alien, older than time. But we, we don't really know that in this movie, so forget the spoiler on that. But yeah, Pennywise is actually an alien, a demonic, interdimensional alien. It's actually what he is. But in this, he's just Pennywise, a creature that has the ability to take on me forms of fear. So he feeds on your fear and makes your fear become a reality through illusion. And he really likes fucking around with these kids. Eventually they um, they scare Pennywise into hiding by the end of the movie, thinking that they defeated him. And they, and they make an oath that if Pennywise comes back, so will we to finish what we started. And that's basically how the movie ends. Yeah, I know there's not a lot of details I went through, but I'm trying to scheme through this because we're already at 11 minutes. Went a little bit more than I wanted in this, but that's okay though. If you keep it at 15 minutes, these videos can upload a lot faster. Because I will tell you right now, it's been uh, over a day later since I've done the John Wick reviews. Or to say, the one review that got somehow within the process of being recorded split into three parts. It's, the second part is uploading right now as we speak and it's only at eight percent you know my ad started uploading this approximately five hours ago this is the reason why i don't like using my c drive on my pc to upload videos which is why i always try to keep them at 15 minutes so let's go to the quality of the movie this film actually was preceded with Dovey Vision in its theatrical run. So this is one of the few cases to where the movie was actually designed for 4K HDR technology. Not really HDR de 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 technology, so I'll take that back. It's not designed for HDR, high dynamic range technology. But what it is designed for is um, a Dovey Vision 4K master presentation. So no, this is not the true version of it. The 4K one is. But even the 4K Blu-ray isn't because um, Stephen King's It Chapter 1 was preceded in Dolby Vision with Dolby Atmos combined with it. But it has very good neutral colors. Um, this one does have a bit more of a 1980s nostalgic look to the movie, unlike the second movie, which has a much more modern, basic HD um, transfer to today's standards. But this one actually has a nostalgic 1980s feel because it takes place in 1989. You can definitely tell that watching the movie. It is in 240 by 1 wide, so it is the CinemaScope. So um, that's how we would say about the um, video. So let's go into the um, audio. This Dolby Atmos track is very enormously exciting and extreme on the heaviness of audio.